Welcome to SelfDiscoveryWisdom.com, formerly known as Self Discovery Media. On these podcasts, you're going to hear people who speak from the heart. They've taken the journey in life. Many things have happened to them, but they've changed it to happening for them. And in their strength, their courage, they've discovered their abilities and their wisdom, and they are now sharing it here with you. Do enjoy each show. We bring it to you with love and knowing that it's going to help you on your journey of life. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Self-Discovery Mediums, right here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest is Brandy Van. Well, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to be talking about spiritual medium and psychic development, because she's a mentor. She helps highly sensitive people discover their unique psychic gifts. We've all got them, folks. They're just waiting to be ignited. She says, I'm a spiritual medium and psychic development mentor and I really want to help people who uh, to know or who know they have psychic abilities but are afraid to talk about it with other people uh, who don't have that uh, control over them and want to be mentored and how to create more light workers in this world part of their journey inside of the program in self-discovery because they need to do a lot of self introspection inner child healing work etc because the more they can heal and the better they know themselves, the more their abilities will be able to grow. And at the start of her journey, it was very hard to find a mentor that um, there's no class to take. <laughs> nope, there wasn't. And she felt very alone and she wanted to make sure that other people don't feel that way. And they actually understand what it is they're going through. So we're going to talk about when she was young and how she was hearing spirits and getting messages and wanting to ignore them. But you know, you can try and ignore the best you can. But unfortunately, if they're knocking at the door, you've got to answer. Welcome to the show, Brandy. Hi, thank you so much for having me today. Now, you know, I, I went through this myself, you know, but, you know, I'm very much older than you. So back in the day, you didn't talk about it because you were scared of the white coats coming to take you away. <laughs> right. So, you know, if for me as a child, is why can't you see the dead people? Why can't you see, you know, these other people in shadows around you? Why can't you hear them? Why can't you feel this? Why is it only me? And I learned to be quiet because it was an accepted thing and certainly mentorship, nothing like that around there. And there's so many people that have suppressed it and it's come out later in life because it will come out. That door has to be opened at some point. But having somebody that knows what you're going through, how to identify it, what to do with it, how to channel it, how to trust it, to read it is so important. So I'm so glad, glad that you've taken this path because for so many people who have woken up to this, it's been a scary moment when they suddenly find these have these, these abilities and they don't know what to do with them. Exactly. Yes. And I was in that same boat, you know, it was like nobody talked about them. And so I felt very alone and, you know, I'm afraid, you know, if I tell someone they're going to think I'm crazy mm -hmm. or they think I'm making it up or I'm doing it for attention. So you just get like almost like hushed about it, you mm -hmm. know, until, you know, one day I just had a very spiritual, like a profound spiritual experience. And it was like, OK, I can't ignore this anymore. I don't want to ignore this anymore. And I had been so afraid to tell my family about it. So mm. I really thought that they would thought, you know, I was crazy or whatever. But when I told them. They were not surprised at all. Apparently, my mom's side of the family, they all have abilities. And so no one was surprised. They're like, oh, yeah, your great grandma had them and your aunt has them and your cousin has them. And I'm like, well, why is no one talking about oh, yeah, Why this? didn't you? Yes. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have gone for all this suffering if you'd opened yes. up to that, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It, but it was a two and is in still many in many ways a taboo subject. You know, yes. because people are oh, you're wacky, you're this and that. And that's the limitation thinking of others right? That yes. you can't take that on. You'll always have those naysayers that would disagree with anything. Even if you tell them the sky is blue, they'll <laughs> argue with the point with it. So you're not speaking to those people. You're speaking to the people who understand the frequency, understand the vibration that you're yes. on, and that you understand that channeling, because really what it is, is about is channeling, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because those are my people, exactly like you said, because, you know, it, it did take me years to find a mentor. There just like aren't any out there. Yeah. And it, it was like I found out from a friend through a friend through a friend yeah. that someone <laughs> did it. 
Um, and so now, you know, I'm like, I just, I want to be like the spokesperson. Like, I mm. love my ability. It's my passion. I love talking about it. And if I can just even let one person know, like, hey, I can be your mentor and help them. Like, that is my mission in life. Mm. Like, I just don't want them to feel alone and to feel crazy because it's a beautiful, amazing thing, these abilities. But yeah, there's no like, I mean, you can read a hundred books, but you'll only learn about them. You're not going to actually experience it. And so that's what my program is all about is experiencing it so that you can develop them and really empower yourself. And like you were saying, to trust yourself, that's Mm -hmm. definitely the biggest thing is trusting in yourself. But it's also that, um, you know, in opening that door to that channel, you're helping people in a safe place discover their abilities. And everybody's going to have different abilities. They may be common-like, but they're going to come through in a different way. Some people are auditory or visual or kinesthetic. Uh, you know, uh, for me, everything I feel is transcribed into vision um, okay, and yeah. words and vision go together. And so for me, through the years, um, I've just been able to see I'm, I was a knowingness person, so knowing what I needed to know when I needed to know it and imparting mm-hmm. that knowledge, even if I understood it or not. I've been that since a child, you know, imparting knowledge. How do you know that? I don't know. Can you repeat it? No. Yes, <laughs> what does it exactly. mean? I have no idea. Yes, but you know it. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I know, know it, I know, right. but I know it. <laughs> and you needed to know it. That's the reason why I gave it to you, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, but it's that trusting of, you know, what, how is it going to come about for you? Because even though you might be able to uh, channel, uh, what way are you channeling? How do you know which is the pure channeling and which is channeling that you need to shut down? And we really do need a mentor, somebody that understands to, you know, don't just open up carte blanche, which I did. And I got body possessed. Oh and it gosh. took four people to hold me down as I'm riling on the bed. Oh, um, wow. And and then these were footballers, beer drinkers. The last thing they thought about or ever believed in was this. And I was oh the exorcist to them at that time. Oh, my gosh. They were freaked out. Then I lost half of my body's blood because I hemorrhaged. And so I went through the whole thing. And that is because I was 19, 20, and I opened up my channels to dive right in without protection. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And that is something, yes, we want you to open up and trust. We want you to download this beautiful wisdom. This is why this is called self-discovery wisdom, is to discover your wisdom that you can channel, that you can embrace, that allows your heart to ignite, just your spirit to get into action and your mind to know what it needs to know when it needs to know it. That is that wisdom. But you do also need to know the other channels that want to slip in along with that. Exactly. Right. Yes. And if you don't know how to protect your energy, I always tell people that if you're just dabbling in it or you're experimenting with it, this is strong stuff. Yes. So it doesn't matter how strong or little your belief level is. It is real. And if you don't know what you're doing, you know, you might think you're talking to your spirit guide, but it could just be a negative entity that's tricking you and yeah. making you think that, you know, that they're trying to help you. So yeah, it's a very serious thing and you don't want to play around with it. You want to know what you're doing. Absolutely. So I'm so sorry to hear about your experience. Yeah, no, oh no, I mean, this was, you know, body snatching, you know, and that wow, there, yeah. are, there are those entities that have died suddenly and haven't moved on they're just they're just still in shock and they're in limbo and they just want to get back into a body and reclaim their lives and uh you know kind of no fault of their own because they're stuck in a traumatic void when we're unable to move forward and you know there are many people that their gift is to help them move forward that is what their gift is but to open up that door to set them free um but at the same time for you know if you are dabbling and and they're just going to jump in. And so yeah. they, that also goes for people who are maybe very sick or very weak or going through a trauma. You know, you are at a low vibration and that is the vibration they jump in on. So exactly. we, do, we do need to know. And, you know, for me, I white light everything. Uh, what what yes. do you do? Uh, what's Same your thing? thing? White light. Yeah, the white light, yeah. white light. <laughs> so white, let's explain... white bubble, white shield, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let's explain why white light is so very important. Sure. So white light to me, and this might not be for everyone, but I believe that it comes from the cosmos. Mm -hmm. So whenever you can bring in any type of energy that's not your own, so that you don't deplete your own energy, you're using that on that limitless, that boundless energy. And when you can protect yourself with that, it is like this 
an infinite uh, protection bubble. So it doesn't matter where you are or however you're moving, that protection bubble is going to stay with you. So it's really important to, yeah, protect your energy and then not only protect it, but if you feel yourself depleting, then restore your energy as well. Because if you deplete your energy, you're then going to feel sick or you might feel fatigued or you might need to take naps or sweat or whatever it might be. So energy, as you know, we're all made of energy and you really Absolutely. need to protect that. Mm. everything is energy everything has a signature like everything could be go down to noughts and ones you know we are all down to a particular frequency and the energy that we ride on is what will open up to the higher consciousness so the higher the consciousness that we rise up to the higher the truth and the purity that we rise up to but yeah i mean I white light my kids, my grandkids. I white light my when I'm driving or flying. You know, yes. White light everything. <laughs> and really what it is, is just inviting that pure energy to come and, and bubble you and protect you, you know, or protect the loved ones that you're white lighting. And it's just asking that universe, as you said, that cosmos to just give that protection field there. And, uh, you know, that when people go, well, you know, that's just words. Well, you know, people pray. People pray to God. Those are just words. And yet you feel his presence. That is energetic presence. That is um, whether you believe in God, universe, spirit, source, energy, it doesn't matter. It's all one thing, whatever you want to identify it as. But that is what you're praying to. And that feeling that you get when, when you feel immersed in a prayer and you feel heard is that energy of saying to you, I've got you. I hear you. Yes. And I think it's very important with the white light as well to set your intention. So yes, yes. I always set my intention, you know, only spirits of the highest realm and the mm -hmm. highest good are allowed to talk with me because again, you will just, that's another way of protecting yourself yeah. so that those spirits aren't even allowed to come and talk to you. Now, a lot of people don't realize that they are intuitive. We're all intuitive. We, we all have those instinctions, but not, not, you know, you've got people for thousands of years, you know, the, the shepherd who knows the weather's changing, got to move the sheep and, you know, the farmers, yeah, up, something's in the air. We, and this isn't just the weather. It's just, you know, they know the danger, the sensory. It's yeah. really, and they really trusted their sensory. But I think that as time has gone by, we've numbed our sensory and our intuitiveness and we've become very kind of instant gratification and also handing ourselves over to whatever's out there and we've lost that connection inside with our own senses how do we get people to to acknowledge that and to ignite it and and turn up the volume on it sure so um, well, first, I just want to give you my favorite quote is on my website. I have it right here on my desk. It's from Albert Einstein. The intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We've created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. And exactly. that's exactly what you're talking about. Exactly what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Yes. So, you know, to listen to your intuition, I always say it's a four step process. So first, you need to ask yourself a question, because if you don't think to ask a question, then you're never going to start that process so mm -hmm. first is asking it a question then you're going to listen to the intuition and your rational mind takes about five seconds to kick in so you're not looking for a thought you're looking mm -hmm. for a feeling you know yes. that feeling in your gut in your heart and it's going to come instantaneously it's going to be that feeling of you just know what the answer is then you need to trust the answer you really need to trust yourself it's always going to lead you to your higher path and then you need to act on whatever it said. So if you ask your intuition, should I have a salad or a burger later? And you really want that burger, but it said salad, <laughs> you got to have the salad. <laughs> so just to give a quick example of like, that's how you really got to listen to your intuition and how you can get back into practicing it. And it is a practice. It's going to yeah. take time. You got to have some patience with yourself and be committed to it. But it's always going to lead you to your right path. So why not do it? It's going to lead you to a more authentic life and to your meaning, you know, your meaningful purpose in life. So why not do it? Exactly. And, you know, really what we're doing is we're um, unprogramming uh, the thought process that sat us on a treadmill and that has blocked our own intuitive voice. And yes. the more we're willing to feel, I mean, for me, I have to feel the thoughts for them to make sense. Otherwise, they're just random thoughts going blah, 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 up in my head yes. and that I can't really do anything with because they're just thoughts and they could be negative, positive or whatever they are. But when I feel 
you know when you feel right like right yes. up here you know the cervix and your gut and your body everything feels and you know yes it's right or no it's wrong don't argue with it yes. trust it please trust it you don't always have to actually understand but why give me a reason the reason will come right but just trust the feeling at that time of to yes go with it blind deaf and dumb in order to hear see and feel or to know I don't need to explain why but I'm sorry I just can't go down that path yes and I always tell people how many times have you been like I knew I shouldn't have done that yes and I'm like that was your intuition yes, yes. <laughs> that's what we want to avoid <laughs> yes exactly um and I think also, you know, a big thing is we're so busy living an outside life and not an inside life. And when we connect with the inside and we allow the soul wisdom to be our compass, our heart consciousness, you know, our spirit yeah. action and our mind, knowing what it needs to, you know, that's the database of which you extract from what you need in that moment. You become present. And when you are present, you see things more in clarity yeah. and you trust more the allowing and the surrendering to the moment. We haven't been taught that. We've been taught the opposite for so long now that really it is a total different mindset in order for the feeling set to take over. Yes, absolutely. You know, our ego, our rational mind has been around. It's always been in the driver's seat. Yes. And it doesn't. Where has it got come- us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It just doesn't want us to come out of our comfort zone. You know, it wants us to just go by the facts, go by the science, and it doesn't want us to go by our heart and by our, but what, by what we feel. So mm. I always say, think of your ego, like a best friend that's taken you so far, but now they're giving you bad advice. So just thank it for that advice. But today I'm not listening to you today. I'm listening to myself. <laughs> and truly, but you, you know, you've got to put yourself in a space where you can hear yourself. You know, you talk about hear myself think. No, hear yourself feel. Yes. Hear yourself feel because those will lead you to the right thoughts. If you hear just the thoughts, it will talk you out of feeling. Absolutely. Yeah, I always say think of your inner critic. The louder it gets, think of it as your best friend. And instead of seeing it as an enemy, the louder it gets, that's when you really want to believe in yourself and push harder because the louder it gets, you're getting that much closer to your goal and it doesn't want you to get there. So see it as your biggest cheerleader and keep going. Absolutely. Anybody and everybody can step into their intuitiveness, into their divine gift. Absolutely. Everybody. Sorry, a bit chesty today, folks. Um, The whole thing is, is, when we start chasing the illusion or the dictation um, of, of what society is deemed as important and we decide to place that importance on our inner selves, on our beingness, on our presence of why we're here, and we discover our own beautiful instrument and we learn to play that instrument, we now can join that orchestra and each one in their own strength in harmony together can create a sound that is, you know, ascending, transcending and illuminating. But before we can join anywhere else, and a lot of people want to join things uh, to be a part of it. But I'm always saying, be a part of yourself before you join something, because otherwise you can join the wrong thing for the wrong reason. And there's a lot of spiritual churches out there that really are just a different branch of religion, even though they think they're different. Um, because it's still rigid and spirituality is about fluidity. It's about freedom. It's about going with the flow and being in tune and really knowing your instrument and how to play it. How do you get people to understand that? Yeah, I mean, it's it takes a lot, I feel like, because of the <sighs> rational mind, right? Mm. So you almost have to like train them to think in a different way and I always let them know your reality is going to change yes I mean it's going to go from I've known this my whole life to now I'm looking at things in a new perspective so you got to have them understand that you know that is going to change um but to 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 play your own instrument as you were saying which is a beautiful way of I love how you're describing that it all comes down what I think is that self-trust because if you don't trust yourself, you're not going to trust the messages from spirit. Mm. You're not going to trust your experiences. 
And so then you're going to do yourself a disservice. You're not going to listen to those messages. And if they're for other people, you're not going to give those messages to them either. So a huge thing. And I know myself, like I had been a medium. I was getting a lot of validations and I was still thinking like, am I pulling this out of my ass? But like there, I can't be, I don't know this. So how, yes. you know, but you're still like, it's just, you're just so wired to mm. think that way that this is not real. And so mm. until you start to get those validations, <laughs> And then you just come to the point of, I don't need to have validations anymore. I just need to trust it. So that's a huge Instead of doing or thinking you're now being. And when you step into beingness, then you know you're at home with self and spirit. Right? Absolutely. And and we can all get there again. But I think one of the other things that's very important to understand, it doesn't matter what has happened to you to this point, how injured, how traumatized you are, that is a human emotion that you are going through, a human reaction. When you step into the spirit world, into that divine essence of love, and you learn to love yourself in all your flawsomeness and all your cracks and chips and everything else that's happened to you, and you put yourself back together with love, love of self, love of who you are, love of why you're here, then you actually step away from all the trauma and you can look at what has happened to you and to share that story without the negative feelings because you know where you are now and you're in presence of love and you are the love and you are the peace that you seek but it does require people to be willing to take the journey Yes. And not only looking at your past, but it also gets you to look at that for your future. So when something does happen, a struggle or a challenge or a frustration, you start to think of your past experiences and what did that teach me? And what did I learn from that? So when you're going through that new experience that might not be the best experience you're having, you're now going to think, what is this going to teach me? What am I going to learn from this? So yeah, it just really changes your perspective on how you look at things. And it's not a question of rose-colored glasses, as a lot of people think, you know, la, 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 rose-colored glasses, you're not living in reality. No, we're living in clarity. Yes. That's the difference, right? Yes. Yes. So let's talk about that. What they perceive as reality and what clarity really is. I mean, yeah, you create your own reality. So if you decide like something just upset me and it's going to upset me all day or all week or all month, you're deciding that. Or you can create your reality to say, and this is what I always say, if I'm going to be upset about this from five years from now, Mm -hmm. then I'll be upset about it. But if it's not going to upset me five years from now, I'm choosing to let it go. So it's really about letting it go, what you can let go And knowing that you have that control over your life. So if society tells you that something should upset you, you don't need to conform to what society tells you that you need to be upset about. You have your own control over that. And I think that's a big thing for people to learn how to do because we have been so like this pattern of, oh, this should be upsetting to you or this should be, you know, so we just kind of have that in our blood, but we definitely need to, yeah, create our own reality. I mean, you know, what is trauma it's it's an injustice that's being done to you physically spiritually you know to your psyche to your well-being but what can we do about it we can't undo what's happened to us but we can choose how we choose to heal from it and what we become in spite of it and i think that is when people really rise up to their own epiphany their own beautiful essence and start opening up to the gift that they are, is when they've decided, yes, this happened to me. It sucked. Yes, I may have scars today, or I may have triggers that I've got to be weary of, but I am more than that experience. How do I take that experience to strengthen me, to give me the courage, the abilities, that I can step into that higher plane? And when they do that, they become such illuminating people with such insight and such divine presence that everybody pays attention. But that willingness, that willingness to say, I am more than what has been imposed upon me. I decide what frequency I rise on. Yes. And thank goodness, a a lot of those people then help other people because 
you know, because other people have gone through it. And then when they see that someone else has gone through what they went through and that they're rising above it, it then motivates those other people. So when you can really become that clear on something and then help other people with it. I mean, I think that's just a beautiful pattern. And if we all did that, we would all be able to help each other, which would just, I feel like that's the whole reason we're here. (laughs) Exactly. You know, we are as human beings meant to have already got to this higher elevation of dimensional uh, energy. Uh, We haven't even tapped into our abilities yet. We've been living the humanoid life without trusting the spiritual experience that, you know, that has been brought to us. And it's all about the spiritual experience in the human form. But when you put the two together and you see what gifts they are together and you can really travel together as spirit human, then you really see our abilities and what we're here to do. And we're just scratching the surface of what we're really here to experience and what we're capable of. But again, we have to step out of expectation that's been imposed upon us by a dysfunctional society. And we have to look at how do I take onus of my own choices and take this path in trust, as I said, blind, deaf and dumb in order to see, hear and feel. Because it is a surrender, it is a trust, there is no manual. There are tools and skills that you can share with them. But they're going to use those tools and skills differently to what the last person did according to the journey they're on yes absolutely and it's crazy because I created this mentorship program and as my clients go through it they have abilities that I don't even have so I'm always amazed by that like I created this program I mean that's what basically I learned and I taught myself to do and now I'm creating these light workers that yeah, they have these abilities that I don't even have. And it's amazing to me that like, oh, I I didn't even know that that's what was going to (laughs) happen. So it's awesome to watch. And and it's also to to discover. And I think we're also at the other point is, you know, I'm a connector, you know, I've been podcasting 11 and a half years. So I'm connecting people to people like you who are there to help people on their journey of life. And when the people are ready, the teacher is there. So I'm providing the teachers, whatever level people are on. Um, so I'm the connector. I'm connecting people. I've always wanted to be, please, please, can I go up to the fifth or sixth dimension? I'm much happier up there. Yeah, can like, I work up there, please? And it's yes. like, no, you've got a job to do. And, you know, you may not always kind of look at your calling and go, okay, this is what you're here to do and go, all right, I relish in it. I do relish the results. I do relish the actual journey of doing it. But in you know, can I can I just dip up to the higher floor for a moment, please? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because that's where you get your rejuvenation. But I think it's, it's understanding the gift that we're given, that meaningful purpose, the impact that it has on others, and and how it helps us all rise up to that higher consciousness which we are desperately needing to do as a humanity yes you know whichever gift we're given in order to do that it is just embrace it because you have no idea the impact that it has until one day we see the collective how we've all risen and my theory right now with so much discourse in the world are the third dimensioners that are still holding on to fear to hate to greed to opulence to lack. And instead of doing something about it, they're still pointing the finger that it's everybody else's fault. Three fingers are pointing back at you and they're saying, well, what are you doing about it? Where's your own self-responsibility and how are you stepping up? For the people that have gone into the fourth and fifth and higher dimensions are people realizing I need to take onus and I need to look at my choices. I need to tap in to my inner child, to my inner presence, my inner soul, and I need to connect and live a life of a higher consciousness. The willingness is there. But it's rare to find someone like you who's helping people navigate that journey into their meaningful purpose. And we need more of you, so can you clone yourself? Uh, Mm -hmm. Because quite honestly, that's where people are at. They're in discovery of the beautiful gifts. But it's still like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to read this. I don't know how to use this. Because there's still the the human expectation imposed upon them instead of the <sighs> trust and go yes. with the flow. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and I 
I just love being that person for other people. And I, I just can't believe that there's like not many of people out there doing it. Like, I don't it, know why it's not a thing. This inspires that people talk about rising up, that talk about the impact that it has, that talk about that what we will do for the human species, for all life species and for this planet itself, because we have caused the problem, uh, but we also can be the solution. And yeah. really, quite honestly, the universe is begging us to step into the solution right now. And that's why it's opening up those channels more and more with people and waking them up. But yes, we do need more people like you that can say, look, don't be afraid of this feeling. Right. This feeling is something that you need to stop. Don't act on it straight away. Sit with it to actually understand what it means. This is how you protect yourself. And this is how you rejuvenate yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because when you do step into these higher realms, you're all about exuding energy. But we've got to remember we have to harness energy ourselves. Yes, definitely. And it's a beautiful process to to be like, I think a lot of people just have a misconception about it. And that's the problem too, because we're silenced and we're not, and it seems taboo to talk about it. So a lot of people think it is about the exorcisms and the possessions <laughs> and maybe you're in the occult and things, but oh, if they everything really is a cult, isn't it? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> But if you really knew how beautiful it was yeah. and the meaning of it and where it leads you, I mean, that's that's the thing that I get most upset about when someone doesn't understand it. And I love to educate them on what it actually is. So, yeah. If you look at us, I mean, there are trillions of cells in our body and they're all working and they all need to be optimized in order to maintain this body, psyche, mind, heart, soul. But if you look at us as human race, as those individual cells, Right. If we all took the responsibility to be as plump and juicy and open and and energetic as we can be, then we are part of that collective of keeping all that cell structure healthy and wise. Right. So sometimes people are scared of doing it. But then if you think about the impact that you would have in stepping into it, not just for yourself, but for everyone else, because your cup runneth over, your energy exudes out to other people. And sometimes you have no idea the impact you're having on other people just by your smile, by kind words, by your energetic presence, never mind the actual gift or tool that you have and how it can elevate people. So although it's unknown and we have been taught as human beings to fear the unknown because most people are afraid of just the unknown rather than knowing what they're afraid of, it's also that wondrous presence of who we are and what we're here to do and that makeup of who we are. We're not just bone and flesh, right? The energy that is within us is what's holding the bone and flesh together. So we need to tap into that divine energy. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and when you look at it that way, you know, when you know you're connected to everyone in this world and the whole universe is connected, whatever you bring to the table is, is going to help so much. So even yeah. though you're one little person, you don't know how big a, a difference you can make in this world. And especially if you don't ever try, then you'll never be able to do it. So yeah, that's a big thing that I encourage people is to just, you know, you know, your gifts or whether they're psychic or not, whatever you can bring to the table and help someone else, you're just helping that collective. That's what it's about. And I think it's to actually understand a lot of people think it's, it's you know, like Star Trek, the Borg, it's all one mind. No, it's, it's, it's like a beautiful musical number, right? And there are different notes in that number. There are different instruments that that number, there's different pitches and crescendos and quiet moments and beginnings and ends. And we're all one of those things. And we create that number collectively together. But again, it's only as impactful as it is in our participation, in our wholeness to the song, right? And it, it isn't about, oh, I'm just going to be part of the collective and I won't need to think they'll think for me, right? It, it is tapping into the energy of the collective to enhance even more who you are and why you're here and what you're here to do, but to also understand you are supported by the energies around you, by the people that have elevated, by the universe itself, you are supported. Yes. And I think a lot of people lack that, unfortunately. Mm. I think they 
they don't see the big picture like that, especially if you don't have, if you haven't been on a spiritual journey, or if you don't have spirituality in your life, I feel like that is a, a part of that that's lacking. I mean, we still do have an awful lot of people that are, you know, um, this is all woo woo. It's all cards well up and this and that. And, you know, they're just not ready. They're just not ready to take the journey. There's nothing you can do about it. Right. But for those people that are just feeling something, I don't know what it is I'm feeling. I don't know why I'm feeling this way. Yeah, I even feel a bit uncomfortable with it because I don't know what it is or what I'm doing mm-hmm. with it. That's the time to talk to someone. What is it I'm feeling? Now, don't go talk to the person that shut down over everything. Yeah. Right? Talk to the person that you know that is that is uh, on the journey ahead of you. Right, that it or has reached a certain goal, and they can speak to what it is you're going through. But in today's age, we have no excuse because we have this thing called internet, (laughs) and there is so much information out there. Yes, right, podcasts, TED talks, sites, information everywhere where people can tap in and go, okay, now I hear what this person, this is the reason why I do these podcasts. When people hear you, they're going to know, oh, I can relate to this person. So therefore I can talk to her, right? Yeah. I feel safe to talk to her. I feel safe to open up and, and I won't feel stupid. And it doesn't matter if I am being stupid and she won't treat me as if I'm being stupid because yeah. we, we all, in a lot of ways, we all goof off in many ways <laughs> in this beautiful <laughs> spiritual world. But that's the whole beauty of it is that the information is out there anymore. So we don't have the excuse to say, I don't know or I don't know where to go. It's the willingness to take the journey in that self-discovery of what has been ignited in you and what to do with it. And you're there to help them. You're there to help them on that journey of growth, understanding what it is. And you might only yourself help them actually understand that entry level. And they may grow beyond you in what they're meant to be. But your job is there to show them that ignition and how to switch it on. Yes. (laughs) And tap into it and trust it. (laughs) Yes, that's definitely, that's it. That's exactly right. And, you know, uh, people think that, oh, I'm going to become a healer if I do that. Well, we're all healers in, in our own ways because it is about healing the psyche mind, body, heart, and soul, because that's what peace is. It's healing. But that might not be your gift. Your gift may be, you know, a whole spectrum of things. And it's just, don't, you know, go, I know I want that gift. No, no, no. You have to embrace the gift that you're given because it's important. You wouldn't have been given it if not. And the one that kind of shouts the loudest to you, that feels the loudest to you is the one that you need to tap into. Definitely. And, you know, I'm a medium, so I'm able to talk to deceased loved ones. Mm-hmm. But, you know, all mediums are psychic, but not all psychics are mediums. So exactly. some people just can't talk to deceased loved ones, you know. So, yeah. I mean, that's just what I have. I'm also able to tap into a spirit guide. So I'm able to talk to them as well. But, you know, I don't feel like I, I'm i a healer. I don't I don't believe that I have, you know, I mean, I can pray for someone or or give advice, but I don't feel like I have that uh that that gift i suppose i suppose what you bring about is clarity of understanding so yes. through the medium message it's a clarity of something they needed to hear right yes, yes. uh when and you're that should tra- be healing oh that well. absolutely because it's not yes. just about healing the body it's healing the psyche yes. right we, we we have not given any credence at all to to our psyche and our psyche if it's shattered if it's abused if it's if it's ignored you know, it can be extremely sensitive. And so if we can heal the psyche, it in turn heals everything else. Yeah, that's true. So we're all healers, even if we're just messengers, because there's healing in the message. Yes. So you're a messenger and you're a, a tool advocate or showing them the tools that they can use in order to activate safely, yes. wisely, and in an in tunement of what it is that they have. Yes. How far do you take them before they flap their wings and leave the tree? (laughs) (laughs) So I always tell them, you know, my program is three months. If they need me longer than that, I do have a membership program. They can stay with me as long as they want. But I can't tell them, 
oh, you're going to be magically psychic in two months. It's just (laughs) an individual's journey of when they're going to be able to do that one exercise that they've done a hundred times and never felt a difference. And boom, this time they feel that difference. So, and I give a lot of those exercises to do until you feel a difference. So yeah, there's no magic timeline. You know, it's just like, um, if you were to like learn how to play basketball, like, I don't know how long it's going to take you to make a three point shot or whatever, you know? So, I can't really guarantee it, but I can guarantee that if you keep working on this, it will absolutely happen. But yeah, there's no time frame in terms of that. And somebody could switch on within a week, which is oh, great. Yeah. Yes. But they're all ready to put their foot to the pedal and it's like, uh-uh, you know, now you've <laughs> got to know those next steps. Um, yes. How to use it, where to use it, and when, you know, and how not to overuse it. Because yes. there is such a thing as overuse Definitely. because that's what depletes you. And if you're depleted, then you're no good to anyone. Yes. And also learning how to set boundaries. Yes. If you have spirits coming to you all day, you're now you're going to miss out on your human experience yeah. because you're always going to be in the spirit world. So yeah, that all goes into the, that's all, everything I talk about in my program. I had a, um, a psychic on one time from London and she has spirits to talk to her all the time. And they all wanted to jump into the conversation. Well, I had an umbrella on my deck that all of a sudden took flight and went over two houses and landed in someone's garden. Wow. That whole internet just shut down because there's so much energy coming out at one time. And then when we got rebooted and got her back, she said, I had to have a talk with them. You're like, take your turn. We'll get the message across, but you can't all jump in. Now, to some people, that is weird. But no, they are energy. Right. And if they're all trying to jump in at the same time, (laughs) they confuse things. It was funny, my people knocking on my door. Your umbrella is just landed in my gun. There wasn't any wind. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. And and it's always those little things, isn't it? Kind of weird things that you start noticing happening. Yes. What's kind of the weirdest thing that's happened to you? I don't know if it's weird, but um, every single day I have the sequential numbers. So if I look at the clock, it's 111, 222. I wake up in the middle of the night, 333. Like sequential numbers just seems to be my thing, whether it's in a bank account, the clock, the, you know, <laughs> license plate. Like that's definitely my sign is sequential numbers. And is there some significance behind those numbers? There are, yes. So I actually have a numerology book that talks Mm. about it. And I don't like to go too much off of books. I like to use my own intuition. So, I mean, I might glance at the book, but I really use my own intuition. Well, it's using that basic knowledge to understand. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. And then put my own intuition into it. Exactly. I mean, I love numerology. Um, You know, I have my own problem, um, your view of life. And I'm a true colors coach. So I talk about the human perspective and how we, you know, our personality traits and how we perceive and receive information. But then I mix astrology, numerology, Chineseology, and Mm -hmm. and also the true colors. And I look at the common denominator of all of those personality traits Mm -hmm. as to which is your strongest or which is your weakest and what you can do about it if you can, because some are so Mm -hmm. strong and the weakness don't bother <laughs> you know, concentrate on the strength but it helps people actually understand what's holding them back or what's helping them come forward and that very often is what the blockage is isn't it I just don't understand I don't know how to understand these feelings or I don't know how to understand what is happening to me um, I have read a book and it says this is that what it means because they you know you take the knowledge that's been written by somebody else that's great yes But then you look at that knowledge. How does it apply to me now? It's not black and white. Yes. Right? Exactly. It's not black and white. So we can read all this knowledge and understand. But how do we use it? That is our intuitive understanding. Yes. And I actually, like, I always tell them for, like, my clients, I don't do anything with tarot cards or oracle cards because of that. Because I don't like that someone decided you know this is what this card means so I always tell them if you're going to read cards you need to trust your intuition and just do it on your own like make your own meaning for that card and the card can change for every single person so I don't like to you know look at the look at the the guidebook for or a mm. manual for the card so right. I, I I don't do cards myself because of that reason I'm a gypsy reader so we use playing cards oh okay right? yeah. and so the playing cards have indicational meanings but it's the pattern that tells the story 
Okay. So it's not like, oh, you know, I, do, I can't read tarot. Tarot and I do not go together at all because I'm definitely a gypsy reader. But it's the formation of those cards that will give you the thread of the story. All they're doing is helping you foundate what the pattern is. And then from the pattern, you can you can see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. So, um, but no, I've, um, I've never had a good tarot reading and, uh, and I've never you know, being able to use them properly because I do find them too restrictive. Yeah, um, yeah. But I love the I love the Celtic runes. Uh, yeah. The runes are wonderful because they're very, very present. They will tell you exactly what you need to know in the now. And that can hone you in <clears throat> into understanding this feeling I've got. Oh, okay. This makes sense. Yeah, right. I, I read this. This is the present where I'm at right now. That makes sense. Where I go from here now is my choice because of clarity where I am. Yes. Yeah, that's beautiful. <clears throat> so tools are good, but it's don't don't go carte blanche on them. You know, like it yeah. is they are tools that help you have an understanding uh, to understand th what the energy is trying to tell you. Yes. Yeah. But it is inside of us. I mean, we can. Um, you know, whatever our gift is, it's it's always inside of us. But sometimes because there's so much noise out there and static, we need a little something that can bring us in. A lot of people, you know, use crystals or I use a, a pendulum, right? Yeah. To just, uh, just uh, okay, you know, what is this for? Muscle testing. That's brilliant, right? That's really great because it helps, again, hone in. What am I feeling? Uh, because sometimes we feel so much, we don't know how to understand which is the message and which is the mind message. Yeah. And uh, so it's finding what it is. It isn't about all cross-legged home kumbaya meditating, right? It's being able to actually hear the message amongst the chaos. Yes. Yeah. And that's exactly what I teach them. It always starts with meditation, you know, calming your mind, clearing your mind. But then there's the extra step of now we're going to do visualizations because when you can, how you said earlier, I forget how you worded it, but like, oh, it's just your imagination, but it's not like we're no. creating something. And then when you create something in your mind, you'll notice when you don't create something and now you recognize that was a message from spirit. So that's yes. like a big thing that I teach them about the imagination part of it. And, you know, that imagination is, is um, I mean, I don't know about you, but everything comes to me in storytelling. Okay. It comes to me like a movie. Okay, yeah. Right. So, and and I have so many experiences that I haven't ha experienced here on Earth. Wow, but the, all of those experiences are absolutely valid because they happened on a different plane, right? And yeah. I think that's something to understand is that the physical of us is earthbound here, but our spirit isn't. It's multidimensional yes. and can go and play on many planes. <laughs> yes, yep. Even right now, um, according to the spiritualist doctrine, um, you know, only like maybe 80% of us is here and 20% of us is still in the spirit world. And that's why when we go back, it's considered home. We're going back to the rest of our energy. When people pass over, I say they're going home. They're yes. going home to the collective. <laughs> yes. You know, it's yes. the end of expiration of the body here. The body yes. experience. And the, the soul is going home. And whether it's reborn again to come back to have another experience, we all are to a certain level. Um, they bring that imprint of the knowledge they learned before, not in exactly turn to page this or this or that, but the feeling, right? Yeah. And it's and you know how you have those feelings. I've done this before. Yeah. Well, I yeah, didn't know I could do. do this so well, but you know, it sounds like you've been doing it forever. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> I've just started. And it's like, it's it's that past imprint coming through. Yes. Absolutely. And a lot of people, well, in our society, they don't really like certain religions don't believe in the reincarnation. So that's also, you know, getting people to realize that religion and spirituality are actually two different types of thought. There are two different yes. things going on. So uh, you can be religious and not spiritual or vice versa. So it's it's two different, you know, types of thought going on. But, you know, in religion, you are praying to a God that you can't see. Right. And you uh the experience you have is you feel him so whether we're calling it god or anything else it's it's god's energy right yes. it's that energy you're tapping into and if it's pure uh, you know god doesn't have i will punish you if you don't believe in this religion that is not a god god that is a human god because yes. god loves unconditionally 
Mm -hmm. right? And pure energy is pure energy. The negative energy is negative force and negative intentions, right? Yeah. Um, but, yeah. the, but love only knows pure energy and love is God and God is love, whatever you yeah. wish to call. And when you tap into that love, it is pure energy. But, you know, the interesting thing is, um, you know, whether people are religious or not, but in Catholicism, I think it's 14th or 15th century, I can't remember, they believed in afterlife. And they stopped that belief and told people they were going to go to hell if they didn't conform in this life as a form of control. Because oh, people wow. thought, you know, I'm, it's okay if I leave this life and can come back again and do it again and do it better. And they had less control. So this is where the whole devil and evil came in as a fear factor that if you don't do this, you're going to go to hell. Now, this is my question to you, human beings. Are you happy here on this planet? Are you happy where your life is? Because if it's utterly miserable, you're living in hell. But you could be living in heaven right here on earth in a beautiful divine experience, in a meaningful purpose, in a higher elevation where you are in heaven right here in a human experience. So heaven and hell lives with us in parallel existence. It's all a question of choice. Yes. And that goes back to creating your own reality. So if you're creating that reality of not enjoying your life, of doing things that you don't like to do versus things you do like to do, that's your choice. And yes. you're creating that reality. Yeah. And it can be heaven or hell. And it's yes. up to you. But when yes. you step into that higher elevation and you step into that beautiful clarity and that trust of allowing and just it just is. I just am, you know what I'm talking about. You don't need to go any yeah. further than that. When you step into that, that's when you actually look at life and go, yeah, yeah, I'm at peace. It doesn't matter what turmoil is happening around me or even what's trying to happen to me. I'm at peace because my control is in that peace, is in that love and is in that that is. Yes. I can when weather you're... any storm. <laughs> yes, when you're calm, when you're yeah. centered, when you can manage your emotions, you do have that peace. And it's it's such a, a beautiful place to be in. <laughs> and this is why you're doing what you're doing, because this was your calling. This was your journey. Um, all that you had to learn to do um, in to hone this in was in understanding that more and more people need to have that what I call entry direction into igniting their spirit. They've got the feeling it's knocking up the door. They all suddenly find they can do this and that, but what do I do with it? And the first yeah. thing they do is become afraid of it and shut it down. Exactly. Uh, and, and what we want to do is open them up. No, it's opened the door for you. Open it wider. Just, it's just yes. what you need to do to actually, before you take that next step, just, yes. you know, this is why white light is important and being able to read your energy and not overexerting yep. your energy and how to replenish and the boundaries. You're giving them those tools that have become very practical for them to embrace their spiritual gift. And that yes. is a beautiful gift to give people. Yeah. And what's really scary is when you have an ability, but you decide not to develop it yeah. because now spirit has control over you and you're not, you're not able to say, Hey, I don't want a message right now. Or maybe you don't know who the message is for. And then you feel guilty. Like spirit just gave me this message. I don't even know what it means or who it's for. So it's actually scarier if you know, you have an ability and you don't find someone to help you or you don't control it or develop it versus just having the ability by itself. And you may be in an arena where you feel you can't share that, you know, family members or ultra religious people or this or that. Then, as I said, you look for people like yourself that you can talk about it with, that you can understand it, that you can, you know, hone in what it is actually you're receiving and what you're meant to do with it. And then it may mean that you need to break away from those people. That's your journey in life to embrace this gift. Or maybe you're meant to bring this gift to them. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, we don't know what our gifts are for until <clears throat> they're given to us and we understand what they're for. But don't be afraid of them. Yes. And there is literally nothing that someone could tell me that I haven't heard or experienced myself. No judgment here at all. I'm mm. sure I've experienced or heard of someone else's. Nothing, like, shocks me anymore. <laughs> 
I mean, you know, like even me being body snatched, you know, it does happen to certain people. And this was back in the 70s when I was young and I had no protection. I was just diving in and my channels were all open with no boundaries. So this is why it is important. It doesn't mean you're going to go through this experience that I went through, folks. The message here is to go through the experience with somebody who understands which doors get open, which don't, and how you protect yourself along the way. We're not asking you to be afraid by protecting yourself. We're asking you to make sure that you are channeling the proper channels yeah. and that your channels aren't bleeding into each other. That you're being responsible about it. You're not just playing around with it. You're respecting it and you're, yeah, you're, you're being responsible. It's not a parlor trick. <laughs> exactly. Right. It is something that's a gift. I mean, we see, I don't know if you watch um, America's Got Talent. Yes. But more and more, we're seeing magicians come out and do extraordinary things. Now, part of that is a skill and a tool that they've learned to do. But a great deal of it is magic of them using their energy, of, of intuitively channeling in. Now, we can hone in on someone's channel. And we can feel that channel, that vibe, that frequency. And we can immerse ourselves in that channel with them and see what they're seeing. But it's so beautiful to see these magicians doing what they're doing because they are intuitive creatures tapping into a gift that is showing people what magic really is. And that is, quite honestly, we have the ability to do anything when we tap into the energy for the right reason. Yes. It is amazing. I tried to do magic ones. I'm not good at it. I don't know. They, it's just a lot of practice <laughs> and commitment whenever you're doing things like that, for sure. Just like it, just like with us, with learning our intuitive abilities, you know? Yes. Just like practicing anything. It's a practice. And the thing is, you'll know whether it's for you or not. You know, you may have been given a few gifts and you just don't know which one, which one. And that's what you're saying, kind of practice on the various ones. And there'll be one that will go to, ah, oh, this, this, this is it. This is it. And you may, you know, you don't know until you have immersed yourself into experiencing it. And it doesn't mean the others aren't valid. It just means this one is going to lead the pack yes. for the others yes. to follow. And, you know, some people are given one directional gift and some people are given many gifts uh, yes. to lead that one direction. And yes. until you uh, ignite your heart, soul and spirit, you're not going to know. Exactly. You just got to go through the journey. Yes. Right. And if you don't, I feel it's like, it's so sad. It's it's such a great thing to go through. Like, (laughs) yes, it just, it just brings so much more to your life. You know, it's just, that's the only word I can describe it is like, you just get more out of life. And, you know, a lot of people think that they've got to do something huge and profound, but, you know, going back to the orchestra analogy, the triangle may not be in every piece, but the piece it's in, it's very, very important, right? It's always, not always about the soloist. When you go into um, an office building, and you're going to go see this important CEO, but the building is dirty and tidy. Your opinion of the CEO has changed. So therefore the janitor has set the stage. So never ever look at your gift and go, oh, it's no, it's too small or it's not very important. Everything is important. Yes. Everything has importance. And we've seen that through COVID with, you know, our, our food deliverers and you know, grocery yeah. workers and all of these yeah. people, the nurses and the doctors and the people we took for granted, you yeah. know, suddenly became our heroes. And we don't look at their jobs as so little anymore. We look at yeah. how important they are. So whatever mm-hmm. gift you are given, never look at it and go, well, why isn't it that? You know, it was given to you for a reason. Yes. And that reason is for you to discover as you use it. And it's really important. I tell this to my clients all the time. Do, don't compare yourself with others. You know, you might think that they have it all put together or that they're not having any struggles or that their ability is stronger than yours. But there is no comparison. We're all unique. We're all individuals. It's like comparing apples and oranges. There is no even reason to compare to yourself. So don't even think of, you know, yourself as lesser or more than yes. because, that person might think that they're lesser than, and you might think that they're more than. You just never know how someone's perspective or perception is. Yeah, and it's deadly to do that because then you yes. feel less than. Yes. And you are not less than. 
no. So, and then that will lower your vibration. Exactly. You got to do yeah. the opposite of give, doing your gifts. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, you know, I am what I am, as Popeye says, and that is enough. <laughs> all right. Because yeah. we're all here for a reason. Uh, and, and it, and, we need all those different, I mean, for somebody who's actually the soloist, it's a lot of pressure and responsibility on them. Do you really want that? I mean, there are some people that have been chosen for that, but they've also been prepared for it through yeah. lifetimes to reach yeah. that level, right? So, you know, wherever you're at, but I think the most important thing, you know, as you said, you take people through three months and if they need longer, they need longer. You're allowing them the time to have that self-discovery of what they're spirit really is what their gift really is uh that time to open it up and to digest it you know it isn't about over a weekend and you will be opened up and enlightened you know it's um you never want a force entry like that uh you yeah. want people to do it gradually because there's a better understanding of what it is how to use it how to trust it and you know basically how to identify it which is really really important and then also I'm there with them every step of the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I give them my cell phone number, my email address. I have a private Facebook group. I mean, they can contact me anytime. I love talking about this stuff and I am just so passionate about helping them. So I never want them to feel like, you know, if, if they don't ask me the question and they can't get to the next exercise, then they're stuck. And that's the yes. whole point. I don't want them to be stuck. So right. and there's no question them. too silly, right? I mean, it doesn't no, matter. Not. If, you yeah. know, if, if that's what comes out of your mouth because you can't make sense out of it, you know, it may be, you know, funny, but don't worry about it. There's no judgment here. It's Absolutely like, not. Oh, yeah. you know, there is, there is a reason why you've asked that question. Yes. Right. And if you don't know, then you're going to channel what the answer is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, having somebody along that journey with you, because, you know, I'm 69. So for me, having that journey, I did it alone. And I did it at a time where it was very much ostracized. And I know with past lives, I've been burnt at the stake, persecuted, you name it, for being, because that was like, I came here to be that heart and soul igniter uh, right from the beginning of time. So I know that that's always been my path. But it's so nice now in this lifetime and this era that we can do what we're doing without the fear of the white coats or, or worse, you know, yes. coming along. And it, there's always going to be people that will foo-foo it and condemn it and this and that. It's not for them. Wish them well, right? Wish them openness and love. It's their journey for them to discover. But for the people that are no, know that there's something knocking at their door, they know there's something going on. And I just don't quite know what it is. To have somebody help you on this journey is a gift in itself. Because it is hard to do on your own. It is. I know. Yeah, and it really, it <laughs> accelerates the process. Yes. Because when you're figuring it out on your own, there's years that you could just be like, where do I even start? <laughs> yes, exactly. So at least I'm giving them that starting point and can accelerate that process. But so, you're also yeah. giving them a community. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We're in like a community, community of other like five people. Yes. And yeah. so they, you know, again, they don't feel alone. They've got your support, but they've got also the camaraderie of everyone yeah. else because you know there's another word that I don't like is compete you're not competing with one another no yeah right you are collaborating and you are celebrating each other yes right yeah. because you are in the vibe tribe yeah <laughs> I love whenever someone who is almost completing the program is talking to someone like maybe at the beginning or the middle and they're talking about how they dealt themselves mm -hmm. and they're like, no, I was there too. Keep going. Look mm -hmm. where I am now. And yes. that's just like warms my heart because yeah. just to watch them celebrate the wins and encourage each other. It's not something that that's just something extra, you know, sure. Your mentor is going to encourage you, but someone that you don't know, that's like-minded, that's been in your same yes. shoes, like just a month ago and encouraging you it's just priceless yes trust the process the breakthrough will come yes right definitely. yeah and, and that's what's important we are again solo cells that need each other uh, on our own we cannot work functionally we you know we're responsible for the plumpness of our own cell but when we come together collectively in that same higher frequency we are unstoppable yes and we are the change that this world needs. We are the peace and we are the love that this planet needs. 
Because she's going to evict us otherwise. <laughs> she's not happy with us at all. Uh, yeah, exactly right. So, and, and the that, people yeah. that aren't on the, you know, that that don't believe or they are the skeptics, like I just feel sad for them. You know, I feel yeah. like if you had a choice of when I die, I'm going to see all my friends and family again. I'm going to, you know, ascend. I'm going to help the planet. And instead, you're thinking I'm going to live my life for me only. I'm I'm just going to die, and it's, everything's going to go black. Like I just feel like, why would you want to believe in something like that? Yeah, it's so doomsday. Like- <laughs> yeah, 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 it's so dark and miserable, yeah. and and uh, it, it's also so unaccountable because the vibration that we pass over on right yeah. is and whatever vibration when we choose to come back to, to for the next part of the journey which may be that now you're on the higher elevation you've come back as the mm-hmm. teacher mm-hmm. right not the student that you know I always say to people you know let go of the resentment and the bitterness and the vengeance in this yeah. lifetime otherwise you take it over with you and impose it in another lifetime and they yes. don't even know what it's about Yep, all that karma and yeah, yep. all that. Yeah, but we've you know it is, we've all got work to do, folks. But the work doesn't have to be hard, and it's illuminating with each step that you take, right? With each discovery that you take, with each door that you open, it it, it isn't about reaching heights. It's understanding that it's arms locked together around. That's it's that love that just ripples out. And it just brings about such clarity and peace. And after all, isn't that the true abundance and the true enrichment of life? Yes. And that's where you find your true authenticity because you don't need to feel judged. You can be yourself and you can be accepted. You don't need to hide behind anything. So, yeah. Yeah. So you can do this virtually as well as in person? Yeah, I've been doing everything virtually. Um, So yeah, that's not an issue. I mean, I actually prefer it because where they're going to be in their home, that's most likely where they're going to be connecting with spirit anyway. Mm -hmm. And I live in a busy city where there's no parking and it's loud. So yeah, it doesn't really work for them (laughs) to come to my house. So yeah, anything can happen. Even my mediumship readings over the pandemic, I wasn't sure. I thought I had to do them in person, but I learned that spirits with me no matter what. So I can do them over the phone virtually. It doesn't matter. Spirits energy is there with me. Uh, I mean, energy, you know, it's everywhere, you know, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't need to be, you know, it doesn't have a, just a two foot radius, it, you know, it's, yes. <laughs> it's everywhere the intention is. Yes. Yeah. So definitely. And uh, it's not restrictive. And this is another thing what I say about when people have stepped into spirituality, it isn't about restricted or protecting yourself from everyone else. It's about the freedom to be. It's about the freedom of that loving energy. It's about exuding it out. The boundaries we talk about is making sure that you're on a high enough elevation that the negatives aren't going to come in and try and suck the energy out of you. So the higher you go, the less chance there is of that. But also the smaller your group becomes because you want to be around other energetic type people, right? Because you can do more together. And they also help sustain your own energy, which is important. And if you have to leave people behind, folks, I'm sorry, that's part of life. And that they're on their journey, and you're not responsible for their journey. You may inspire them to take a journey. Or you may just leave them behind because they're not yet ready. The person you are responsible and accountable to and for is yourself. And what you bring to the table um, but who you are and you can't drag people along with you and you can't stay where you are because they're not ready. This is part of the life of your own elevation because you are here for a bigger purpose. And that's not a selfish thing. I feel like a lot of people think, oh, if I live my if I live my life for me, then I'm not helping others. But it's actually the more you know yourself and the more authentic you are with yourself, the more authentic and more you'll be able to help other people. So I don't, a lot of people have that misconception that it's something yes. selfish, but it's yeah. actually the opposite. Yeah. You become that illumination of light, that beacon of light for others to follow, right? Yes. That's the yeah. important thing. Okay, my love, your site, how people get hold of you, your Facebook, your Instagram, give it all to us. 
<laughs> yes. So my website is brandyvan.com and that's Brandy with an I. Um, if they go on my website, they can book a discovery call, which I would love to hear about their experiences. And if they have any questions or if they want to join the mentorship program, that's a great way to get in contact with me. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook and my tagline is um, Brandy Van Medium. And whether you want to have a reading or whether you want to channel somebody from the past or whether you want to, um, you know, discover, do I have it in me? Is is this what's knocking at my door? Right. That's yeah. what that discovery call is all about, because you will know yeah. intuitively what it is they need to know at this point. Exactly. Right? Yes. And so it's but, you know, the thing is, <clears throat> this is word called free will. Right. And we can't help you unless the free will is given. Right. We can't impose anything on you unless you give us free will. And we have to understand we all have free will. And that free will is that opening and accepting and allowing other energies to come in and help us and to share our energy. And when people surrender with the free will, they're giving permission for themselves and for others. And that is a beautiful thing, but also one of the biggest protections you have. You just, you know, people think, well, you can, if you can do this and you could do, you could jump into my mind, you could jump into that. No, because yeah. there is this universal spiritual protection that you cannot do this or that unless there is the permission of free will. Exactly. Yes. It's just morally not right if you enter someone else's energy without their permission. I would and never just, do You just can't do it. I mean, you may yeah. pick things up. But you can't do it without, can Can I share this message with you? If they say no, yes. you, you can't because that's that free will, uh, whatever yep. that message is. Um, but yes. the, the thing is, that is the boundary that is imposed upon us by the universe. But that's also what protects us and them. Mm. Trust it, folks. You are so much more than your human flesh and your limited mind, right? You're so much more than your programming. You're so much more than what has happened to you in life. You are a beautiful divine essence that is waiting to be discovered and waiting to discover what gift you are to the world. And we're all here to be contributors. We're all here to contribute our divine gift to that collective in order to raise that energy in the world, which will heal not only the planet, but all living things on it. So we are the solution and we are it to ourselves and we're it to us collectively. So the more and more you embrace that, the more you embrace an open willingness to your gift, the more you'll understand what life is all about, what you're all about here and what, um, what your gift means to humanity uh, in a whole and Brandy's here to help you on that journey. You don't have to do it alone. She's here to help you understand what it is you're going through, what you need to do for the next steps, how you need to trust it, how you need to learn what it is and hone it in. And she can help you all along that way so that one day you leave the nest with your wings flapping, self-assured that you know who you are, what you are, what your gift is and how to use it. Right? Thank you for being here, Brandy. Thank you so much for having me. Remember, folks, you're not alone. That gift is not a demon inside of you. It is a divine presence trying to come out and show you your path and your meaningful purpose. Please embrace it, not only for yourself and your own life, but for the ripple effect that it will have on all others. Until next time, bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. There are so many more for you here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. Just go to the podcast tag at the top there and you will see all the many genres and all 3,000 shows ready for your listening. We are here to serve you, to help you on your journey of life. And we know that through inspiration, it begets invitation. We are supported by you, the listeners, and those that we interview. Anything that you can spare us in donation would be greatly accepted. And we do hope that you enjoy the next show.